Okay. Make sure everything is working. All right, I think we're officially live. Welcome everybody back to another Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts hard mode campaign playthrough. You guys know how it is. I like to play through an entire campaign in a single sitting, so we are about to do that. Now there's been a new update and a lot of new, uh, a new things added. So uh, give me a moment. I'm going to post my link to Twitter real quick so that we get a little bit a little bit of more people in here. Hard mode campaign play. Bonk. I hope you guys you guys definitely heard that. I apologize. I apologize. All right, there we go. Post it. All right, who we got here? We've got uh, Darth Sooner. We've got Greatest Comrade, Todd. The Wolf, Felipe. Uh, Yafet. And Nariko up in the house. What up, folks? Welcome back to another episode of Spartan Takes on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's Hard Mode Campaign. Now... We've been doing, we, we finished the Germany campaign, and we've done, uh, we've done the Germany campaign, we've done uh, the first couple of campaigns of the British, but uh, today we are going to be checking out, um, well, we're going to be checking out what has changed. So if we go to news, you can see that they've added a lot of stuff with the newest update. They've added a map expansion, which expands the map to include the Mediterranean Sea and a larger portion of Europe. There are new nations in this, which is Italy, France, Austria-Hungary, and uh, that's it. So Italy, France, and Austria-Hungary uh, are added to the major nations. The nations for form two rival alliances and fight with each other for total victory. This is temporary functionality until we offer the prolonged campaign system. Okay. So if I had to guess, I'd say it's kind of allies versus uh, Axis, essentially, if I had to guess. So, task forces, previously you were able to move ships only between ports. You can now also form task forces by grouping ships and sending them to any sea point on the map. In this way, you block strategic passages and generate missions according to the ships in the vicinity. Finally, we get some actual functionality of the map. Instead of it just saying, oh, hey, look, this happened. Hey, this happened. You have these ships, this happened. Okay. So now you can actually form task forces with the ships that you create and move them into strategic areas and patrol and get rid of or intercept enemy forces. Keep them out of your area. I'm liking this, guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, refit mode. Now you can refit your ships from changing a few components to radically replacing weapons, funnels, towers with modern variations. This new and essential feature will allow you to utilize all the latest technology advancements for your current ships without the need to scrap them and build new ones. That's actually huge too, because that's something that I've mentioned multiple times. They've had this technology tree that you can advance in, but it's really only been able to do anything with new ships. You have to create new ships. So this is allowing you to refit older ships with newer stuff. So there's no more of this, oh, we just unlocked a new shell type right after or a new gun right after we we just started the campaign so now we've got to wait until the campaign's over essentially so it actually makes that usable thank you the devs are actually listening they are doing things to help a lot so i i am glad that they are working on the game i i know that i'm extremely critical of this game but it's because i've been with this game since day freaking one just about and I've been with it for a long time. 
So some of the things that we've complained about for a long time get a little bit, you know, old when you're complaining about them all the time and they're not getting fixed. So it is nice to see them adding new things to the game. It's nice to see the game continuing to develop, which is always good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. New C roles were added as well. New C roles added to the previous N being and C control. Special for the task forces. Offer more options for controlling strategically your ships. That's always a good thing. Interface improvements. There is a new tab called politics where you will later manage some diplomacy, <laughs> diplomacy aspects. Now you are able to overview the relations and power of all nations. Additionally, we added an economy growth to the GDP, which will be dependent later from various conditions. You will be warned when you want to end the turn with danger of going bankrupt. When you hover at sea region, a tooltip shows statistical information for the included fleets. Many other minor changes to support the new functionality. I really like this. Balances. Maintenance cost is balanced so that it is not so high now that ships will spend more time at sea with all of the various and expensive sea rolls. Uh, tech research is balanced to be overall faster and tech priorities will give a more distinctive advantage when chosen. So, very nice. Various other balances were made to support the new campaign expansion. Beautiful. So, we got some new hauls. Uh, many new hauls to be announced, so not quite new there yet. But, uh, major new features. Customization of beam and drought. Okay, so that's huge. Uh, I, you guys will have to bear with me here because I don't remember which is which. It's basically how, how deep your ship sits in the water. Okay, so I do know that. And beam, I think, is the width of the ship. So, like, I think I think beam is the width of the ship. I could be wrong. And drought is how deep the ship is. Or maybe beam is how tall the ship is, and drought is how deep they are. You guys will have to, you guys probably know more about that than I do. New components for AP and HE rounds ratio. Choose the distribution of HE and a or AP and HE rounds between different settings for your main and secondary guns. You will no longer have indefinitely any type of AP or HE, but both will have their separate limit. That's huge. That's actually huge. I I like it, but that's huge. That that's a new new level of uh of you know, skill that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to balance how many HE shells you normally use on your battleships, for instance. Uh, same thing for your cruisers and stuff. So that's actually huge. That's a big change. Uh, new components for the AP and HE shell types. The type of HE and AP shell can now be HEI, high explosive incendiary, high, high capacity, high explosive shell. Uh, CNF is a nose fuse shell. CP is a base fuse shell. CPC is common pointed capped, and CPBC is common pointed ballistic capped. Now, if I remember correctly, these common pointed capped rounds were or German. The German used these. They were a lighter round, but they also seemed to do better with uh, when they hit the water. They didn't deform as much, so you were able to get more penetration below the waterline, uh, a.k.a. Bismarck versus Hood. Um as one of the more famous ones but uh yeah the high capacity he that's definitely united states so i'm looking forward to that a little bit more i know the united states used high capacity rounds so uh looking forward to seeing that but uh s or ap shells are sap so semi-armor piercing uh which is nice uh sapbc so semi-armor piercing ballistic cap shell ap armor piercing apc armor piercing cap shell APBC, Armor Piercing Ballistic Cap Shell, and Improved Armor Piercing Ballistic Cap. Okay. All right. So, uh, new battle control option, Avoid Ships. By default, it is enabled and allows the ships to automatically avoid other ships to prevent collisions. You can now override this behavior, thank God, individually for any of your ships, either by improving your swift maneuvers or for ramming the enemy. Also, valid strategies, as we've proven in the past. Uh, we have actually had to utilize rams to kill individuals that we just couldn't hit, whether it be because of some weird physical glitch where they're doing donuts in the middle of the ocean and we're just not allowed to hit them <laughs> or what. 
But uh, yeah, definitely a huge thing there. Gotta love that for those fleet battles where your, your ships just seem to want to run into one another constantly while trying to avoid each other. I don't understand how that works. I don't understand how it's, a ship could try to avoid something by running right into it. <laughs> but uh, new battle control option, ammo for secondary guns, which means you can now select an ammo type specifically for your secondary guns, which is huge. Having our secondaries fire only HE, while our main guns are firing AP. If you're not sure how this works, prior to this update, whatever you chose, AP or HE, it would fire out of both sets of guns. Meaning that a lot of times you were ricocheting your secondaries or they were completely ineffective due to the fact that you were firing AP out of them. Because you're firing AP out of your battleship's main guns. So, big change there. Glad to hear it. Improved shell ballistics and gun aiming mechanics. That's always a good thing. Following the various new options for AP and HE shells, the shell ballistics now follow a much more characteristic trajectory depending on all of the different physics variables. Additionally, the guns aim in a much more realistic manner, firing salvos depending on the target's speed and angular velocity. For example, previously you would see shell salvos to be mostly random in relation to the center of the target. But now salvos are in mass, fired forward, aft, in front, or behind the target until the range is found and hits start to be achieved. This automatic procedure affects the base accuracy and now makes the firing more natural and expected depending on target distance. This is massive. Thank God that this is finally a thing. It's not like, like if, a, if a target continues on the same path at the same speed, I shouldn't continue to miss. Eventually, you find the range, you find the lead, and you start to land hits. That's how it's always supposed to work, right? Yes, you fire a couple of shells here and there early on, you miss, big deal. But over the course of the battle, you should be much more accurate later in the, the fight. Or at least as long as you're not taking huge damage yourself. Improved ship motion at sea. Ship buoyancy mechanics are enriched to support the new beam drought options. The interaction of ships with waves is now more characteristic depending on the weight offset, pitch and roll, beam and drought options chosen for their design. Exponential speed li limit for hulls. As ships reach a maximum speed barrier depending on the hull technology, then the engine weight needed to achieve a higher speed increases exponentially. Thus, it will be much harder to design unrealistically fast ships with old hulls, something that a lot of players abuse to make much faster ships than the AI to overwhelm it. So, that's actually a good thing too. But that also should limit the AI's ability to do the exact same thing, because the AI had a tendency to build much faster ships than they were supposed to be building at the time. So, I, I'm looking forward to that. And I do apologize for this. I wasn't expecting such a long... Um, a long intro to this video, but I do like the the over or the new stuff. They added so much that I wanted to kind of go over it. So other improvements, over penetration mechanics improvement. Overpins will now happen with more accurate conditions. Previously, the unarmored ships would mostly over penetrate, or the heavily armored uh, almost never became over penetrated. So you'll start to see overpins happen depending on where the ship is struck and what armor it's hitting. So that's that's a good thing. Flooding mechanics improvement. Flooding from direct hits will now spread not only to adjacent sections, but further beyond, depending on the height of water inside the flooded sections. This new feature addresses the previous unnatural survivability for smaller ships. Thank you! <laughs> like, the complete zombie ships that refuse to sink. Yes, thank God, this is finally being addressed. Uh, especially the torpedo boats, exactly, which would become unsinkable until more sections were flooded from a direct hit. With this new feature, the torpedo and flooding protection schemes in the design options will be more than essential. There you go. Love to see it. AP and HE different stats. When you hover over the guns, you will be able to see uh, AP shell or HE shell weights, damage range, muzzle velocity, penetration, accuracy tables. Beautiful. More information is always more better. Crew scales with hull size and displacement. As you change displacement, beam drought, the hull crew number will change accordingly. Bigger ships, more crew. It's just the way it goes. Um, let's see. Added instability beam drought values in the battle UI. We already talked about that. Save file system improved. That's always good. I know uh, 
Stealth17, you guys remember him from the uh, Taskmaster series. He's been having some uh, pretty awesome videos lately where he, he builds legendary ships to go up against each other. Like, uh, I think he built an Iowa class to go up against Yama uh, and stuff like that. As best as the game allows, obviously. So he's trying to recreate battles that or, or create battles that have never happened that everybody wants to see. And I actually enjoy that series quite a bit. Um, even if I don't necessarily agree with what he did to my Iowa, which was give it normal rounds instead of the super heavy rounds that he should have been firing, which are com like comparable to the penetration of the uh, Yama. But you know, uh, you know, uh, he's he's doing the best he can. I give him I give him the credit. I love you, Stealth. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, totally not biased towards the Iowa. Everybody knows this. Ship weight cost balances. Balance the weight and cost for various parts and components as it was needed for all the latest new features. Beautiful. Other balances, the Dunite explosive charge is available in late, late tech years. New radar rangefinder 3 is now available and other minor improvements or balances for the ship design options. And minor visual effects improvements. You will notice a little better visual effects overall. And I will be running this at the maximum like game parameters okay so i'm looking forward to that uh battle ai is further improved to make decisions more promptly and effectively by using more algorithms uh the result is an ai that will know better when to attack and defend at which distance always depending on the nation's personality uh auto targeting is influenced by the new ai algorithms and is more effective some older issues should become resolved for example the over -prior prioritization of transports uh, improved the AI decision-making on switching shell types. You will notice that the ships will more successfully switch ammo depending on the armor and angle of the, the target. That's also a big thing. Uh, before, everybody used to get on me, one guy in particular used to get on me, well, Spartan, why are you manually selecting AP or HE? Because it says it, it's auto. It'll, it'll automatically do that. Well, the computer is absolutely garbage at automatically selecting when it should be firing AP or HE. I'm better at it. So that's why I did it. But uh, yeah, so this is, seems like they're getting that, that sorted out as well. AI auto design algorithms enriched to support all the new features for beam and drought, new components. The ships created will be balanced in protection and firepower and thus more potent adversaries. And then a whole bunch of bugs, which is good. All right. So with all of that, let's get into a new campaign, guys. Woo! So here's the thing. I kind of want to, like, let's just look. We've got Austro-Hungarian Empire. We've got the British Empire. We've got the French Empire. We've got the Germans. We've got the Italians. Okay? So we've got four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Five nations in this fight now. So we've got to be a little bit more consistent. And I kind of want to test out all the new stuff. So I'm thinking we go with the Germans and go with the highest tech tree that we can do, which is, uh, uh hello? hello? Nope. So it'll, it'll go backwards, but it won't go forwards. That's kind of frustrating. All right, there we go. 1940. We're going with the hard difficulty. Is there a, nope, there's nothing higher than harder. We are going with historical AI. We don't want them crazy. And we are going to obviously be building our own fleet. Uh, so... With that being said, I want to start this. I know we've done this campaign prior with uh, Germany, but with the new nations involved, the new allies potentially that we could get, uh, the new enemies that we're going to be fighting, the campaign will probably be a lot longer here because we're not going to just be fighting one person. So this is going to be real interesting, guys. We're going to have to actually strategize a little bit, which is something I'm not too good at. We all know this. Wait, what? All right. Uh, just as a just as a heads up, guys. Uh, in case some people haven't haven't gotten this prior, please keep politics out of it. I know there's a lot going on in the world theater right now. But try to keep that stuff out of it because it's highly polarizing. It gets people really upset and chat turns into a mess. So please keep that stuff to a minimum. I do appreciate you guys. Also, I think we crashed the game already. 
Is the game going to sort? Sometimes the game sorts itself out. So we're just going to give it a give it a moment. This is the first time we've ever tried to load into a campaign. So uh, we'll see. But it's definitely looking like it's crashed. Because it's not progressing down here at all. Yeah. Well, that sucks. <laughs> We're off to a great start, chat. Very first time we try to load into a campaign, it's broken. <laughs> uh... Appreciate it, Noriko. Thank you as always. That's why we have moderators in the chat. And like I said, I get it. I I 100% get get the uh, the whole you know politics thing. I just try to keep it out of chat because it does get ridiculous at times, especially in bigger streams. Probably wouldn't be so bad tonight, but in bigger streams it definitely gets to be a problem. So we got to try to keep that keep that on a minimum. Uh oh. Uh-oh, guys. <laughs> we're just going to let it sit. We're not going to we're going to we're not going to touch anything. We're going to let it sit. Give it a chance. Maybe it just takes a lot longer to load in now. But uh we'll see. It's definitely not looking perfect so far. Hey, it moved. It's now February 1935. It's not frozen. It might actually be working. It's just taking longer to load in. This is the first time that we've loaded in it. Keep in mind, we have this game on a uh, a solid state drive as well. September 1935. Uh-oh. Oh, oh it's, it's simulating all the years leading up to the 1940 campaign. I got it. I got it. That makes sense why it's taking longer. Okay. I get you. October 1935. As long as this keeps moving, we know that it's actually working. I don't know if you guys can see that or not very well, but uh, right here at the bottom right-hand corner, we're now December of 1935. So as long as that keeps moving, then we know we're still working. And don't get me wrong, like it's not my computer. This is just the game. Remember, these are all new things that they're implementing. My computer is running a uh, solid 80% 80, 80 computer utilization, and that's with streaming with you guys. So, yeah. And my, my GPU is only running at like 30%, 40%. So, yeah. We're in 1936. It's still loading. But like I said, it is literally simulating every year up to, to the, uh, the 1940 campaign, which I didn't know that it was going to see. Or I didn't know that it was going to do. So uh, I do apologize. But yeah, I'm running a pretty solid computer build, and my computer is actually going to be getting a much needed upgrade in the near future. We're upgrading our CPU from a Intel Core i7-9700K, which is a very good CPU, uh, several years ago. Uh, it's still a solid CPU. It's a good budget choice for a, a solid workstation slash gaming rig. But uh, we are upgrading that to a Intel Core i9-9900K, which will uh, give us a little bit more performance. It has hyper-threading available, which means you're basically doubling your computer or each core's ability to do processing. So you're essentially doubling it. And then on top of that, instead of throttling up or turboing up to uh, 4.6 gigabyte or gig gigahertz, it's going to throttle to 5 gigahertz. So it's going to be faster and a lot more powerful. So it should be a much better option for uh, when we stream games such as, uh, oh, uh, what, are, what are some of the other games we play on PC? <laughs> God darn it. Basically, when we're streaming, we'll be able to stream it, it better as well. All right, so let's take a look. As you can see, we've got Spain down here. We've got France. We've got Italy. Got Greece over here as well. And this is actually a huge, 
Dude, we even got British all the way down in here. But the good news is also that this is going to spread everybody's military out, too. Like, remember, we're Germany, right? So our guys are all up here in the North Sea. Like, this is us. We control this. Of course, we are fighting uh, these guys for sure. But it doesn't show our guys. But we do have a new tab here called Politics. So you, here you can see that we are not allied with anybody. <laughs> Wonder why. Let's see. Uh, the German Empire is enemies with the British, French, and Italian. But the Austro-Hungarian Empire is enemies with the British, French, and Italian. So you would think it would be a pretty normal thing for the, the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians to get into an alliance. Because we have mutual enemies, right? So I don't know how this is going to work. Clearly we're not allowed to do anything here yet, so maybe... Maybe we can do something. But this also allows us to see everybody's fleets. So we see that the Austro-Hungarian Empire only has 25 ships. They are building five. The Italians have 30 ships and are building five. They have zero task forces, both of these guys. So all of their ships operating independently. The French Empire has 23 ships building seven more and they have two task forces. So these guys are a little bit more organized. And then, of course, the British, the British Empire, the largest navy in the world at the time of World War II, is 49 ships deep, which is not a lot compared to what we've fought in the past. So I'm looking forward to this. But uh, you can definitely see up here that our relations with Austro-Hungarians, really good. Our relations with everybody else, really bad. So it's basically a 2v3 at this point. Now, the Austro-Hungarians are going to be fighting the Italians for the most part, but it looks like the British are going to be helping them out. Uh, the French, the British, probably going to be focusing me pretty hard. So, uh, yeah, we've got our work cut out for us. So we need to build very, very good ships here. Now, it is 1940. We're going to be able to build some really good stuff. So uh, let's get right into it. So finances, you guys know I like to start this right off the bat. Let's crank everything all the way up because reasons. And we also want to start getting our shipyard size built up. Actually, that's pretty large. I love that. But uh, we're going to crank that bad boy up another 7,000 tons. That's going to cost us $70 million over the next two years. But it's going to be worth it. If this, if this war drags out, that will be worth it. We already are going to have some of the largest ships in here. So uh, the next thing we want to see is what is currently being worked on that's close. Like big guns is actually somewhat close. We've got new torpedo tubes and sizes coming as well. So you know me, I like big guns and I cannot lie. So we got we to gotta speed that bad boy up. And it went from 21 months to six. Now remember, anytime you, in, anytime you prioritize something, it takes away from the funding of everything else. So notice these went from like 21 months out to 32 months. So keep that in mind. But these will be done in six months. That's actually huge. So we could get a big retrofit on our, our battleships in the near future. So I'm looking forward to that. Conversely, we could just opt out of that and let the uh, the game commence as it is and we get new torpedoes and big guns in a, you know just under two years. Right about the time our new port comes online. So could be a big thing too. And I honestly think that that's what we're going to go with for now. So ship design. Let's go ahead and start new designs. This should get interesting. There's going to be a lot of stuff here. So obviously, we cannot build the Battleship 1 and Battleship 2 hulls. Because you got to upgrade. Those are like the super Battleship hulls. Uh, you got to actually upgrade your ports for that. So uh, Or your shipyards. But we can build a modern Battleship 2. So if we select that. You can see all the air intakes and stuff pop onto the deck. Uh, we can build at a maximum of 64,500 tons. We can set our speed as well. So if we set this to 30 knots, which is pretty doable for this era of ship, I'm pretty sure that's what the Bismarck was capable of, was 30 knots. Um, the range is 10,000 kilometers. And range is actually going to be a lot more like important now because the map is larger. They're not just fighting the, the British. Okay, so beam is the width of the hull. See, I was right. The beam is the width of the hull. It affects the ship's maneuverability, stability, and resistance against hits. 
a wider hull is more stable shooting platform. Uh, and has an increased displacement and resistance, but is generally slower, less maneuverable, a larger target, and requires significantly more engine horsepower to, to uh, achieve a, a reasonable speed. Now, I don't know that we're going to actually adjust this, and the drought is the height of, of the hull greatly affects the ship's maneuverability, stability, and resistance against hits. A taller and consequently larger hull is a less stable shooting platform, but is more resistant against flooding and can carry more load. While the operational range becomes increased by its ability to maintain the cruising speed with less wave resistance. Okay, so there you go. We are going to be going with the spacious crew quarters, because you know what? I love to give my crew the best. Uh, we are also going to be using oil. Uh, we are going to be using forced boilers, most likely. We may adjust that depending on what we actually need. Um, if we go with diesel, everything gets really, really expensive. we got to keep this in mind. If we go with diesel, that might not actually be our best bet. It is going to cost a lot of money. Conversely, if we go with like double geared steamed turbines or turbo electric, that's the thing. Like these are all expensive options. Like it gets real expensive to choose any of these. But uh, I'm thinking the double geared steam turbines. Because it reduces weight. Of course, these reduce the weight a lot. Let's go with a regular diesel engine, and we'll see what we can get away with. Okay, so shaft. Oh, wait, we got to choose uh, auxiliaries. Again, for my battleships, I want the best of the best, basically. These are our, our flagships, you know? We got to have them. Like, they are very important to us. So advanced propeller shafts gives you better max speed, better turn rates, better ship repairs for engines. Uh, but it does add hull weight, engine weight, and engine cost goes up significantly. So if we don't take and increase that at all, that's $152 million currently. These are going to be expensive as crap. Okay, we've got steam steering. Could go with hydraulic steering. Uh, I think we'll just go with hydraulic steering. Don't need to go too crazy. We are going to go with the Krupp 4. Uh, we are going to have really good torpedo protection. Because you know I tend to take torpedoes. Especially this late into the, the campaign. So we are going with a triple hull bottom as well. And reinforced bulkheads. The best anti-flooding that we can get. And we like, because we are German, we go with turtleback armor. Okay. So, uh, main tower. God, this is kind of in the way, I'm not going to lie. It's a good thing that that's just far enough over that it doesn't completely. I guess we could do this, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh oh, we we screwed up. Oh, okay. You can actually. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Currently, eight hundred and fifty-two feet long, which is a slightly shorter length than the Iowa's. All right. So main tower. We're going with the best modern tower that we can get. We want something like right there. And for a secondary tower, again, the best secondary tower that we can get. We are going to make these hug each other as well. Something like that. Okay. Uh, for funnels. I don't think we actually need anything too crazy. Because of our tech. 
Yeah, we're at 80.4 right there with one funnel. So that's good. All right, so barbettes. Uh, if we go with center line guns. We got the 15-inch guns that the Germans actually used would have been 15-inch double barrel guns. Which cost, or they're a thousand tons each. For an extra 800 tons a piece, we can get 16 inch triple barrel guns. And you guys know I love my triples, or my 16 inch guns, because they're really good. We could actually go all the way up to uh, 20 inch guns already. Holy mother of God. That's a bit excessive. We are we are definitely not doing that, by the way. We don't have the, the size haul necessary for that. Like, going with the 16-inch guns would be a stretch, but I think that's our best bet. So if we go with 16-inch guns, do we go triples or quads? I mean, extra guns equals better guns, right? Like, if we go with a quad, we do something like this. Definitely not leaving a whole lot of room here, is it? It's pretty nasty. And then we slap one of these bad boys at the back here. That way it's got good firing angles over either side. It gives us a 12-gun broadside, potentially. We are very heavy. Nah, I don't think we can use squads. A, it doesn't look right, and B, it's really, really heavy. So, let's go with the triples. Something like that. Gives us a standard battleship sort of feel. That saves us a couple thousand tons as well. Which is nice. Uh, we need to put secondaries on this bad boy. Uh, the, the Germans, I believe, used six inch secondaries. Quite a bit. And we could go with six inch triples. Those are 83 tons a piece. The five inch, though, you can put so many five inch guns on this thing. They're only 37. I can literally put two of these for every one of these that we put on. Uh, let's see. So this can go through. Let's see, 52.1 and 92. Or 40.9 and 72. So these are quite a bit more powerful. Obviously. And they have better range. Let's do it. Let's just go with the six inch guns. We're going to be slapping one of those there, one of those there. One of those there. One of those there. All right. So that gives us a what? 12, uh, yeah, 12 gun broadside of six inch guns. That's pretty significant. Uh, there are no casemates on this hull that I know of. So what else can we use? Well, we've got those. Maybe we can throw some uh, five inch guns on here as well. No? Okay. Four inch guns. There we go. Okay. Three inch guns. Uh, 
All right. So that gives us quite a bit of secondaries. And now we get to add some armor, hopefully. All right, so 16.3 inches of main belt armor actually sounds really reasonable. Uh, we've got 16 inch guns. We have 16 inches of belt. Uh, the fore belt and aft belt can be adjusted for sure. Uh, let's bump this up. All right, uh, nine inches of main deck armor. Okay, aft deck, let's drop you down. Let's go like four inches there. I like the fact that we're allowed to put more armor on our ships. I feel like they adjusted, oh God, frame rate. Wow, wonder what's going on there. Um, looks like Gneisenau. Eh, could be, I guess. Supposed to be kind of like Bismarck-esque, but it's more of a uh, standard design than uh, the Bismarck. Bismarck had four qu or four double turrets, so I guess it could be more more along that line. But uh, we definitely need to increase our weight at the back. All right. Uh, how are we going to adjust this to kind of pull these back? I guess the main way would just be grab the turret, pull it further to the back. Like you see how much room we have to play with here. So let's pull this back. We can pull this back. Get rid of that. Move this back as well. really changes the look of the ship, doesn't it? When you move everything back and actually get things kind of sorted a little bit more. Uh, we did lose one of our guns here, so we need to put a uh, six inch. There we go. That gives us our six inch guns back. Uh, we could take this. Nope. Wanted to grab this, put this down here. That brings our weight offset even further. And I guess if we start to slide this back a little bit. Doesn't really make a difference. Uh... What about this? Can we move this turret back a little bit further? Still not making much of a difference. I mean, we could always slide this back a little bit further. I don't want to bring it back too far because I want to keep this rear gun angle. Gives us a rear weight offset. Come on, baby. Oops. 
freaking point three. Really? All right. So there's a little bit of a walkway there for people to go from one side of the ship to the other quickly. We'll say that that's a design feature. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be as about as good as we're going to get. We've got good belt protection. We've got decent forward and aft belt, uh, decent deck armor, which is something unusual for our ships. But uh, what do you guys want to name it? Ah, we almost forgot. See, this is what we always do. We always forget the barbette armor. Always. We always forget the barbette armor. All right, we're going to be dropping the, uh, the deck armor down a little bit. crap so if we go three inches of deck armor there oh god what is going on with the frame rate all of a sudden okay and now can we pull this up a little bit still got a little bit of a walkway there all right. Uh, we can add a little bit of armor, too. Uh, let's go with... All right, I think that's as good as we're going to get. What do we got? Boba Fett? <laughs> Name it the Monty SS? That's not going to happen, Monty. Also, you guys let me do all this and we completely forgot about this. We didn't do any of this. I'm an idiot, man. I'm actually an idiot. God bless America. All this stuff we completely, completely forgot about. All right, we got to have good range finders. We got to have good hydroacoustics. Uh, let's go advanced radio. And we could go with Gen 3 radar. But now we're extremely heavy. <laughs> Damn it. All right, looks like we're dropping the... The deck armor, as usual. This is the easiest way to save weight, if you guys weren't sure. Hitting all the wrong buttons. Alright, let's go with main deck of... One inch. Also, we should probably change this. Um, we're going to be firing mostly AP. Mostly HE out of our secondaries.
probably gonna go with the no the nose fuse incendiary and then for the uh, the armor piercing I think we got to go with uh, that and we will go with super heavy shells again we're gonna be overweight but hopefully some of the things we're about to do will change that so we're gonna be using uh, tube powder which should lower our weight a little bit and then we'll be using TNT I believe and you can see that saved us some weight too uh, we're going to go with advanced hydraulic turrets. Does cause us to be overweight again. Standard reloading. Alright, so let's drop this back a little bit. And we can... We've got a little bit of a weight offset unfortunately I guess we could try to balance that okay that went to a four weight offset well crap I think it's about as good as we're gonna get that all right What's the name, guys? All right, Gragu. Thanks for dropping in, man. Now, we still got spacious crew quarters. Infinite? Well, congrats, man. Good luck on your channel. It's pretty big to have uh, 1,100 views on your first vid or got a video with 1,100 views already if you just started. Carningsburg? All right, we'll go with that. There you go. That did not work at all. Well, apparently we're not able to change the name. <laughs> What's in the name, right? That's an oopsie. There we go. Yeah, this isn't working at all. It's not letting us name it. <laughs> Well, we found a bug already. All right. Let's save the design. Exit. All right. This is 242 million per. What do we currently have? We have 2.5 billion. Okay. Fair enough. So if we go to fleet... And we uh, are actually, if we go to ship design, we should be able to click this and build ships. We're going to build four of these bad boys. They're expensive, but that's about half of our naval budget right there. Maybe we go with five. It's 1.2 billion. It's about half of our naval budget on five ships. So uh, we are going to set all of these to... Uh, Okay, we got to set their port. Okay, we're going to go with Hamburg, Bremen, Emden, Wilhelmshaven, and uh, I guess Kiel. All right, and now these guys, I still can't set their uh, in being yet. 
Oh, it still says they're building. Interesting. So we might not be able to change that until they uh, actually get built next turn. Okay, so again, five battleships is a huge, huge thing because nobody else even has that. I mean, the British are the closest with three. So we have the battleship advantage right off the bat. Uh, if we go back into ship design, let's build or design a new ship. Uh, we are going to be building a... Do we go with a large cruiser or we go with a heavy cruiser? I don't want to do battle cruisers. This would be essentially like the German version of an Alaska. The large cruiser. So I think we actually go with heavy cruiser here. I think we can have a very good heavy cruiser. Okay, so for main tower... We want the best tower that we can get. For secondary tower, the best tower that we can get. Uh, for funnels, uh, we'll see what we end up with. Uh, we don't need barbettes. For main guns, we are going to be using 8-inch guns. Could go with 9-inch guns. These are a little heavier. We're gonna save. The, we're gonna save the weight and go for. Uh, like more survivability we have a uh, 12 gun broadside okay so secondaries we're gonna need see these are 38 tons versus 12 tons but I have a feeling these are gonna be more useful could go with dual dual gun turrets instead of triples that saves us a little bit of weight Let's do that. All right, that gives us a six, six five-inch guns over either. Why did that not place these? There we go. Six five-inch guns over either side of the ship. Which should help keep little things at bay. And then we'll put some 4-inch guns. Oh, are we not allowed to... Okay, 3-inch guns. Why is this one not? There we go. Want them all looking the same anyway. Alright, now, I want torpedoes on this bad boy. Can we get a, qu or a quintuple launcher back here? Not really. Like, if we... If we tried, we could put them probably here. That's going to screw with our turret traverse. And honestly, does it really give us anything at the end of the day? One quintuple launcher. Uh, what if we put them up here? I 
again. Why did that not... Mirror. There we go. We put them there. It gives us a quintuple launcher off either side that is capable of launching at a good angle. So that's good. Uh, that takes care of our twerp needs, our secondary needs, our main guns are solid. Uh, we are going to need a funnel. We need to set all this stuff up. Um, we go for a 35 knots. Spacious oil. Let's get this down here to uh, force boilers. Uh, actually, I think we went with diesel, so let's go with the diesel. Hydraulic. Krupp 4. Barbettes. A uh, little bit of torpedo protection, but not a lot. And a triple hull bottom for these as well. Reinforced bulkheads, the best anti-flooding, and also a turtleback armor. These will fire a... Uh, increased AP ratio. Uh, it will fire increased HE or max HE for secondaries. It will fire nose fuse secondary shells and it will fire or it'll fire nose fuse HE shells and it'll fire the uh, improved cap ballistics. Um, it's going to fire heavy shells. Not super heavy, but heavy shells. It's going to use tube powder and TNT. It's going to use advanced hydraulic. It's going to use bigger torps. Uh, they are going to be fast torpedoes. Okay, now we're a little overweight, as to be expected. Could drop the speed back a little bit, but I don't want to. So we're going to sacrifice some of our deck armor again. Seems to be a theme here. It's what I like to sacrifice. If I have to sacrifice anything, it's going to be deck armor. We're still overweight, so main deck, just drop that down. Okay, uh, we do have the bar bed armor on. Let's take this down a little bit. It's going to make us very vulnerable. I don't like being this vulnerable, if I'm honest. We're so close. There we go. She's not going to be as tanky as I'd like, but I think she's going to be a solid performer. Hopefully. We'll see. She definitely looks odd with these 6-inch turrets, or these 5-inch dual, dual turrets on the side. But, uh, all right, no, have a good night. Hitman as well, appreciate you dropping in. Um, I kind of like the Berlin class. Let's go ahead and call it, well, if we're even able to change it. Hey, it's working this time. So we've got the Berlin class. All right. We'll go with that. I don't know why it wouldn't let us type in the other one for the battleship. But uh, either way, it's fine. Uh, we need at least one funnel. Ah, we didn't put a funnel in? We're such an idiot. But you guys already knew that. 
What do we get for an advanced funnel? 34%. Okay, we're going to need a bigger funnel. Uh, what about big funnel? 54. Okay. Mega funnel. 69%. Well, we're getting closer. Uber funnel? 76%. Uber Funnel 2. There's the 80% that I like. Okay. How is this suddenly badly placed? Like, they were literally fine two seconds ago. Alright. Let's try this again, then. Uh, torpedo Launchers. Quintuple. There we go. Now it's saying ship is overweight again. Of course it is. Hmm. Ship is overweight without the torpedoes. How do we get so heavy? Is it because the funnel? Yeah, the funnel's heavy. Damn it. Okay, let's drop the speed down a little bit. Let's go with 34 knots. And then we can put a little bit more armor in here. We do have a nasty four weight offset. Not a whole lot we can do about it though. Maybe try to slide this back. A little bit. God, fuck. I hate that. Secondary tower. We have just fucked everything up. Alright. Main guns, 8 inch guns, triple barrels. Boom. Then we need secondary, 5 inch guns, uh, double barrels. Do the same thing on this side. And then I think there was a couple of three inch guns on there. Beautiful. Alright, still have a bit of a four weight offset, but if we t if we grab this. Because these parts are all like individually placed, they're actually obnoxious. Alright. Try this again. Bring that back. Now it's got an aft weight offset. We don't want that. Bring it there. Okay. Uh, secondaries, five inch, two guns.
do that. There we go. All right, I think we finally got it back to, to somewhat normal. Good Lord. Uh, uh, torpedoes, I still want torpedoes. How much, I think we got just enough. We'll be close. That puts us a couple hundred tons over. Okay, how about a quad launcher? It's still 190 tons over. Triple launcher? You know what? Screw it. We're just gonna we're gonna make up that with armor. Alright, so we have a bit of a four weight offset. Let's go with a nine inch belt. Why did it jump up? Hello? Still got a bit of a four weight offset, unfortunately. This is a bit more reasonable. Uh, I think it's still about as good as we're gonna get it, guys. I think it's pretty, pretty solid. And that's the maximum tonnage. All right, so a Berlin class heavy cruiser, no torpedoes. It's pure gunboat. We'll see how it goes. Also pretty expensive. These cost only a hundred million less than our battleships. Good lord, these are expensive. For their for their size, these are really expensive. All right, so build. Seven of these. Hamburg. Bremen. Emden. Wilhelmshaven. Kiel. Palau. Danzig. Each port gets at least a heavy cruiser. Okay. All right, uh, let's see what else. Finances. We are down to just 295 million left, and we are currently spending 32 million per month. Oof. What if we cancel this? That only gets rid of 2 million of it. Eh, should be fine. Yeah, it's like, it's like 3 million a month for that. Uh, let's drop our tech budget down to get us in the positive. And then if we go into ship design, new design, Modern light cruisers can be up to 10,000 tons. These guys are going to be our transport raiders, essentially. So we go 37 there. Again, spacious, oil, forced. Diesel.
We're not going to be able to build very many of these. That's the downside. Let's go double hole bottom on these. Reinforce bulkheads. Anti-flooding. Citadel 4. Main tower is going to be a modern tower. Secondary. Beautiful. Uh, funnel. Something like that. Dude, this thing is awful in terms of uh, engine efficiency. Take this down to like 35 knots. It's 800 tons. They don't give you much choice here, not gonna lie. It's a little rough in the uh, smokestack departments for the light cruisers. Maybe we forego the light cruisers altogether. Yeah. Let's change this. Uh, the hull... We're going to go with a destroyer. So we go with destroyer leaders, which are capable of being 3750. Yeah. Well, these cost 6 million left, right? Or less right out the gate. I think we're going to go with a modern, like, standard destroyer. Rather than the larger destroyer leaders. Alright, main tower. Something like that. Uh, secondary tower. Don't need barbette towers. Just a straight targeting tower would be fine. Go like a simple, simple rear tower. For main guns, 5-inch triple barrels at the front and the rear. Um, obviously, we're going to need torpedo launchers. We'll go with quintuple launchers. Uh, if we put a barbette up here, put another 5-inch triple up there. There we go. Because we're not going to have a light cruiser, so these guys are going to be doing the role of light cruisers in terms of sinking uh, transports, hopefully. That's the goal. I don't think they're going to be much use in going after, like, big ships because, as we've seen in our previous campaign at 1940, like, destroyers just get shredded. Like, they just don't, they don't get close. So, uh, we'll see how that works out for us. Um, we are currently capable of 41 knots. That seems a bit excessive. Let's go with just, like, 40 knots. 
Uh, we'll go standard crew quarters. Um, oil. Gear turbines 2. Or diesel. Auxiliary. Shaft. Hydraulic. Good armor. Good barbettes. Single hull bottoms. Reinforce bulkheads as best we can. Anti-flooding. He's going to be shooting HE mostly, so we'll leave it at that. They're going to be shooting... Uh, Soft capped. Uh, let's go nose fuse. All right. Uh, for their AP, they're going to shoot uh, uh, just standard AP. Nothing crazy. Shell size. Go super heavy on that. Uh, they're going to be advanced hydraulic. Going to be two powder. TNT. Gonna need the range finders. Sonar. Radio. Radar. Okay. Uh, let's drop our armor down a bit. Don't really want to get rid of that. What else can we change? We could change the speed. Maybe drop these down to like 38 knots. It gets us within 8 tons. Okay. I guess aft belt, if anything. Dude, we are going to have no armor. Yeah, this is... We can't do this. Um, instead of super heavy shells, how about heavy shells? Heavy shells gets us there. And then let's go with, can't even put any armor on this thing. Oof. And I don't want to give up torpedoes. But I feel like we need to have armor. All right. Let's, let's change our torpedoes. Go with just two launchers. Something like that. Um, they are going to be big torpedoes. And they are going to use fast. Okay. Uh, so now we have a little bit of weight to put some armor on this thing. We didn't put a funnel on it. God bless America. We don't even have room for a funnel. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we even have room. If we do something like that, what's that get us? 100% engine efficiency. Okay, and now for torpedoes. Yeah, there's just no room there. Uh, let's see. Could move this. 
back a little bit. I don't think it's going to help. It's going to have crappy firing angles. Yeah, it's just... Ha! Huh. Could get rid of that extra turret. And go with a uh, torpedo back there. Gives us a little bit more balanced ship as well. Which we can move this back a little bit. Okay. And that gives us a little bit of armor that we can put on this thing some more. Alright, I like that. It's going to be a bit unconventional, but having our firepower with the guns up front, using our torpedoes at the rear, we get to have a little bit more armor pretty much everywhere. I don't think it's going to help much. Now we're overweight. close all right I think that's about as good as we're gonna get these What you guys got for me for a name? What up, for Shizzle? How's it going? Shady Ninja in the house as well. Django. At War. Tom Kerr. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, Plantano, or Platano. Thank you. Sorry I don't get a chance to talk to you guys much. I do apologize. Darth Sooner as well. Appreciate everybody dropping in. Hopefully you're enjoying. I know it's a bit slow to start, but uh, it will pick up, I promise, once we get everything built. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what you guys want to name it. I keep forgetting that we have the delay on, so I do apologize. These are supposed to be like uh, ultra low latency streams. So let me see if I can fix that real quick. Stream settings. Um, let me restart the stream for you guys, just so that I can start it back with a uh, 